Are you tired of using the same old drum samples as everybody else? By recording your own sounds and doing some sound design magic, you can turn a sound like this into a thumpy kick. Turn this into a striking snare. And reshape this sound into a clap. I'll show you how we made these sounds and a lot more. And you can get the sounds for free. Link in the description. Let's get started. Firstly, you need to record your samples. If you have a fancy microphone, that's great. But if you don't, no problems, no worries. You can just use the built-in microphone on your phone and whatever voice recording app that it comes with. Phones nowadays have great sounding microphones. Just get as close as possible to the source or whatever you're trying to record to get a clean signal. And of course, an added benefit to using your phone to record samples is that you can move about freely in the wild. Whenever you hear something cool, just grab your phone, record it, instant sampling material. Once you got your sounds, transfer the audio files from your phone to your computer by whichever method you prefer. Then open Soundation and drag the audio file you want to use to this area in the studio. It will then be opened in the simple sampler. We'll be using this as a sound design tool. Let's start with the kick drum. For this, you need a sound with a big impact and a lot of bass. I'll be using this sample of myself punching a chair. Adjust the start point to the start of the transient. Lower the sustain to zero and play with the decay to make it shorter or longer. Try lowering the attack to make it even snappier. You can change it to a lower octave to get more bass. Go back and fine tune the start point because small changes can give drastically different results. Create a note clip. See what note sounds the best to you. Then add that note. Make it long enough for the kick to decay properly. Now it's time to process it with some effects. First, let's add a parametric EQ to shape the tone. Turn on the spectrum analyzer to see the frequencies. You usually want the loudest frequency to be somewhere in the low bass area. If it's not, you might want to change the note. Activate the high pass filter and drag it right before the peak of the bass. This will clean up the low end. And if you adjust the Q, you can get some extra bass around the cutoff. Take some time to boost frequencies you want more of and cut frequencies that sound bad. A lot of this mid and low mid range sounds honky and boxy. Let's cut it down with a few filters. Use the high shell filter to either boost or cut the treble, making the kick more or less pronounced in the mix. In this case, I will cut it a little. Add a compressor to shape the transient of the kick. Experiment your way to what sounds good. If the kick is lacking some oomph or character, you can try adding some distortion. The kick will often be the loudest thing in the mix, so it can be, in this case, beneficial to use clipping. Clipping is usually something you want to avoid, but when it comes to drums and especially kicks, it can be a great way of making them loud. To clip the kick, add the degrader effect. Set the rate and reduction to zero and increase the gain until the meter on the channel hits zero. Just make sure that the fader is set to zero. This means that the loudest peaks of the waveforms are being chopped off. This clipping is happening in the effect itself, so to leave a little headroom for later, we can lower the fader a bit. Let's hear what it sounded like without the effects. And this is with the effects. If your kick is lacking some clicky top end, you can add that separately by layering it with another sample. For this, I've chosen the sample of me sliding a vinyl record back into its sleeve. Set up the sound the same way as before. An extremely short attack and decay will give it that clicky feel. Add a high pass filter to get rid of all the low end. Add a degrader to not only clip it, but to add some top end with the rate. Now you can adjust the levels to decide how much of that click you want. This is without the click, and this is with the click. Now it's time for the snare, and for this we need a tonal body and a crisp, noisy texture. I'll use the sound of me pouring tonic water into a bowl. The water plops can give us the body and the tone, while the fizz from the carbonation can give us the noisy texture. I'll move the start to find one of the water plops. Adjust the envelope like before to make it more percussive. I'll create a note clip and try to find a good pitch for it. 
Add a parametric EQ. Turn on the spectrum analyzer to check the fundamental tone. The tone of the snare will typically be in the bass or low mid area, somewhere around 100 to 500 hertz. I like the sound of it in the low mid area. Let's accentuate the tone of it by boosting the fundamental frequency. And make it a bit more narrow. Enable and adjust the high pass filter to get rid of everything below the fundamental tone. Add a reverb to give it a sense of space. To give it some smack and attitude, you can add a limiter. Increase the gain and lower the threshold to squash the sound. This will make the reverb tail more pronounced. This is what it sounded like without the effects. And this is with. I want to add more sizzling top end by layering the sound with a different part of the sample. I'll clone the channel and move the start point to somewhere with a nice noisy texture. Increase the decay to create a noise tail. Change the note to get a different tone. You can add octaves to thicken up the sound. Listen together with a tonal part to make sure that they complement each other. Adjust the effects as needed. I'll thin out the noise and remove any unwanted frequencies. And change up the reverb to get a longer tail. If you want, you can of course layer the snare with even more sounds. I added the sound of pressing the key of a Commodore 64 keyboard. Adjust the sampler and effects like before to get a nice tone. This is the full snare sound. Toms are very similar to the tonal part of the snare drum, but without the extra noise and percussive layers. To make your own toms, you can simply take the body of the snare. Clone the channel. Change the note. Accentuate the new pitch with the EQ. And adjust the effects to taste. I'll also add some distortion before the EQ to beef it up. And do the same thing with different pitches to get toms with different tones. For the hi-hat, you need something noise-like with a lot of high frequencies. I'll use the sound of me sliding a vinyl record from its sleeve. Set the start point. Adjust the envelope for a snappy sound. Add a note. If it's not bright enough, try a higher octave. Add a high pass filter to get rid of the low end that we don't need. And there we have a closed hi-hat. To get an open hi-hat, Simply clone the channel, adjust the start and decay to create a longer sound. And for some extra length, you can add a reverb. I'll use the same sample as the hi-hats to create a crash cymbal. Clone the channel, change the start position again. A bigger cymbal like a crash will give you a lower tone, so I'm going to lower the note. Adjust the decay to make it ring out for longer. Increase the size of the reverb for an even longer tail. Let's also increase the width and wet. And there we have our crash cymbal. To create a ride cymbal, I'll use the sound of me scraping a paper holder. I'll set the start to the initial hit. And adjust the envelope. Shape the tone with an EQ to remove the low end and the harsh treble. Add a degrader with a little bit of rate to give it some extra sizzle. And add a reverb to give it a tail and for some space. I will use the sound of opening and closing a flip top cap to create a rim hit. This sound already sounds a lot like a rim. So I will simply adjust the start and end points. Shape it with an envelope like before. Shape the tone with an EQ. And add some reverb. Now let's make a clap. We could just make a clap like that, but this is more fun. I'll use the same flip top cap sound as the rim, but a different part of the sample. So let's clone it, adjust the start and end point. For this, I want the natural decay of the sound, so I will raise the sustain to 100%. Change up the EQ to better fit this sound. Real clap recordings will usually have a group of people clapping at the same time. The timing and tone of each clap will be slightly different from each other, resulting in a fatter sound. Let's mimic that by cloning the channel. Change the note to a different tone. 
Move the starting point back a little to create a slight delay before the clap. I'll repeat this one more time. And this is what it sounds like. Now I want to turn this sound of a cassette switch into some percussion. I'll start with this bit. Again, bring down the sustain and adjust the decay. Add an EQ to shape the sound. Clean up the low end with a high pass filter. Make it more mellow with a low pass filter if it sounds too harsh and boost the mids for a fuller sound. Add a little bit of reverb to give it some ambiance. I want to transform this other bit to more of a woodblock sound. Clone the channel, move the start point, adjust the decay if needed, change the note. In the EQ, Turn on the analyzer to see the frequencies. Boost one of the strong frequencies by a lot and adjust the cue to make it super narrow. This will really bring out the tone. Use the low pass and high pass filters to cut out any unwanted frequencies. Increase the wet on the reverb for a roomier sound. Add a compressor to smash down the transient and draw more attention to the reverb tail. This is what it sounded like without the effects. And this is with. Lastly, I want to turn the sound of me slamming a fridge door into a cinematic impact. Set up the start point and envelope as usual. The decay can be a bit longer for this. To get a thicker sound, you can layer multiple notes at different octaves. Add an EQ to shape the tone of the sound. Add some distortion to beef it up and make it more in your face. Add a compressor to shape the transient to give it more punch. Instead of putting the reverb directly on this channel, we're going to do some parallel processing. Keep this channel dry, clone it and add a reverb. Bring the wet up and the dry down. Dial in the reverb with a pretty big size. Since this is on a separate channel, we can process the reverb separately. Add an EQ and make it dark and bassy. Clone the channel once more, decrease the size of the reverb, and adjust the EQ to make it nice and bright. Now we have a long dark reverb, a shorter and brighter reverb, and if you add all the sounds together, it sounds like this. Now let's export these sounds so we can use them with the beat maker. Solo the channels you want to export and export each sound one by one. For the sounds that are made up of layers, solo all the channels you want to be included. Set the loop region to the desired length of the export. Then go to the export tab and hit export. Export to wave for the best quality. Add and set up the sounds to the beat maker. Check out our tutorials on the beat maker for more on its features and how to use it. Then draw in a beat pattern. As a reminder, these were the random sounds we started with. And this is the final result. You can get this Beatmaker kit by going to Beats in the library and searching for objects. As always, I implore you to experiment with different sounds, effects and techniques. The point of this is after all for you to create your own drum sounds, but I hope you got some inspiration and ideas to get started. In the next video, we'll do the same thing, but for melodic instruments. So make sure to subscribe to not miss it.